Why go with a low-powered amplifier? This question comes from us, to us, from Raul in Orange County. Ah, that's where I'm basically from. I, I, my misbegotten youth was in Anaheim. I live near the corner of State College in La Palma. Uh, and those of you that have read my, my memoirs, 99% true would know that, but there you are. A lot of people haven't read it. <laughs> Your recent podcasts on amps, power, and headroom make a lot of sense to me. Good. And it's easy to understand why you'd want more power available to your speakers. But my question, however, deals with the opposite end of the spectrum. There are a lot of amps, including some high-end products that are below 50 watts per channel and some even below 20 watts. Given that more power is generally better, what would be the benefit of using a lower-powered amp and are there use cases where a low-powered amp is preferred in a two-channel setup? I think that's a great question because, as many of you know, in our high-end audio industry, there's a number of times where you would see a 10-watt amplifier, a 2-watt amplifier. I, I, and, and, you know, they're usually vacuum tubes, and they're huge. Maybe they have one big vacuum tube or two if it's a stereo unit. And they're only a couple of watts, maybe 10 watts. And people pay uh, just huge amounts of money for them because they sound really good. And let's, let's delve into that a little bit. So the bigger an amplifier gets, the more difficult it is to design because all of a sudden you're having to make choices in that design that suit the power requirements. For example, if I want to make a 500 watt per channel amplifier or something like our upcoming 1200 watt amplifier, I've got to have very high voltage in the power supply to do that. And that means that with very high voltage, I need very high voltage transistors or tubes or whatever I'm using. And the higher the voltage, the narrower the range available to me of devices. So if I'm running uh, 100 plus and minus 100 volts, let's say, or plus and minus 80 volts, I need a device that's a 200, 250 volt device. And you know, in today's world of digital audio, computers, the semiconductor industry is not focusing on high voltage electronics. They're focusing on lower and lower, lower voltage devices. So our field narrows as to what's available to us. But there's still plenty of stuff available. I mean, don't get me wrong. We make a 1200 watt amplifier, the M1200, and it's spectacular. And it gives you all the headroom you could possibly want, which is why I'm always an advocate of go big or go home, right? But I want to answer this specific question. So that's the first reason. Second reason, and maybe more relevant, has to do with the uh, output topology, and lastly, we'll cover bias. So many, many small amplifiers are what we would call an SET, a single-ended triode, if they're, if they're a tube or a, you know, a set amp. And, and these are unique in that there's only one output device as opposed to complementary pairs where the top half of the sine wave is covered by one half and then the bottom half of the sine wave is covered by another half, which is typical in a class AB or class A amplifier. You have top and bottom complementary devices. But in a set amplifier, whether it's a uh, tube or a single transistor, you have one device who goes between the rails and, oh, there's a hundred different reasons why someone would want to do that, but purity, linearity, but they're hard to design and they are by necessity going to be small power outputs because to make something big like that would just take it's it just trust me it, it too many heat sinks too much stuff so you're limited 
when you do those small single devices or if you're using tubes, you're, you're certainly limited. And lastly, let's talk about bias. So many smaller amps have very high class A-ness to them, meaning that the current is always on during the signal, you know, for the, the smallest part of the signal. So maybe you've got a watt, two watts, 10 watts of class A, and that takes a lot of power, generates a lot of heat, wastes a lot of energy in service of good sound. So uh, that's basically it. The smaller amplifiers are typically kind of exotic designs, and those exotic designs benefit more from keeping them small. And you give up headroom, uh, in uh, return you get uh, a certain sweetness and openness that is very hard to reproduce in a big amplifier. Hope that helps. All right. Thanks. I'll talk to you tomorrow.